In this video, I'm going to show you how to run Earthwork and Connect. I'm in a, a new seed file or a new T, 2D open road seed file. I'm in my Earthwork folder. You know, I just went to copy seed here, created a new 2D seed. And kind of like everything else in Connect, everything's going to work by references. So, first thing I'm going to attach is my geo or my geometry file. Then I'll attach my terrain. Once I have those two attached, I will make that terrain active. Once I have it active, now I'm going to attach the corridor that I want to create Earthwork for. So let's go ahead and do that. So now I have my corridor. I'm going to look in my 3D file or my 3D model just to see how it's looking. So that looks pretty good. So now what I want to attach is if I have any soil layers. And in this example, I have a few. And I'm going to go ahead and attach those. My first one's going to be select loam. In these soils files, there is a model in there called select loam. So I'm just going to select that one. And I'm going to attach it. And you can see that if I hover over that, you can see that I've got the select loam material. If I look in my 3D, I want to see that too. And you can see that, that material. I'm going to go ahead and finish attaching the rest. So I have another material. I have this topsoil one I created for removing existing topsoil. sure if that one came in or not. Let's take a look. Here we go. I need to add topsoil mesh here. Just attach the wrong model. Now you can see I have some topsoil removal. I'm going to go ahead and attach this unsuitable B. Make sure I got that. You can see it here it is here. And again, I'll look in the 3D model when I finish attaching these just to make sure. I'm going to attach the waste material. Here's my waste. Go ahead and look in the 3D model. Looks like my corridor and my soils materials look pretty good. So now what I need to do is create some cross section name boundaries. So I'm just going to go under drawing production here. I'm in the open roads modeling ribbon. Now I'm in the drawing production. I'm just going to create some name boundaries. I'm going to make sure that I'm picking the civil cross section. I'm just going to pick this large 20 scale and I'm just going to follow the prompts. It just says identify the path. That's going to be my geometry. And let's pick somewhere where we get some materials. Let's go ahead and pick 1060. And then 
I'm just make sure we get a few here just for our example. Let's just go to 1090. You can change the interval spacing here to be 25. For this example, I'm just going to leave it to 50. I do not want to create a drawing or anything for this, so I'll leave those unchecked. And then I'm just going to accept those name boundaries. Look in the 3D. There they are. So now I need to create some cut fill meshes. So I'm going to go to the home. Underneath civil analysis, there's going to be create cut fill volumes. You can see this dialog here. There's going to be some feature definitions for your cut and fill. You'll just select for the cut feature definition. You would select volumes cut. For the fill, you'd select volumes fill. So I'll accept through those. And now it's asking me, do I want to compute unsuitable? And do I have any unsuitable soils materials? In this case, the unsuitable material is going to be topsoil because we always want to remove it and replace it. So I'm going to go ahead and select the yes. I want to compute unsuitable. I do not have a custom. And it's asking me to compute substrata. So our substrata is ones we're going to be the waste, the unsuitable B, and the select loam. And in substrata, it's just going to remove it in cut areas. It will not remove it in a fill. But I want to make sure I select yes for compute substrata. And then I'll accept that. And this could take a little bit of time, depending on how big your project is. Or I kind of picked a short section here to do. So now let's create my cut fill volume meshes. Another way that you could review this is in your dynamic cross-section view. So if I go back to corridors, I can grab dynamic sections. I'm just going to select that. It says locate corridor. See what these meshes look like. I'm just going to turn my line weights off. Another thing that I like to do is you can see the meshes that were created. The red and blue would be your cut and fill. But I want to turn off my geo. I'll, turn, I'll leave the terrain on. I can turn it off too. Turn off my corridor. 
I will turn off these meshes. And now the only thing I'm left with are my cut fill meshes. I'm left with my TC waste mesh, my substrata loam mesh. And it's a good way to check your volumes or your end areas. If I highlight that, you can see that's my fill. The way I check that is I can go to my drawing and I can measure by area. I can flood these. and get an area back. So that looks pretty good. So at this point, my meshes look pretty good. They looked okay in my dynamic sections. I can create cut, I can do an end areas volume report. If I go back to home, go to civil analysis, here's an end volume, end area volumes report. I'll just select that. I'm going to select my name boundary group. That was the name boundaries I placed in this file. Now let's follow the prompts. And now it's going to process those name boundaries and create me a report. This takes a little bit of time too. Once that's done, I can go up to Iowa DOT tabulations here. And currently the report that we're going to look at is this 2-12-21 Iowa DOT earthwork. And you can see that we have our cut volumes, we have end areas, we have our select loam we're reporting on. Here's our template fill end areas. Here's our topsoil replacement. Here's our stripping. Now you can use this report and open up that dynamic window and check your areas to make sure you're getting the right quantities. And that's kind of all there is to it to creating the end area volume report.